Well, they come down pit lane at 55 miles an hour, and Dave Burns is in Kurt Busch's pit. They're going to put on right sides, Marty. Jason Muser on the rear and Ken Pillsbury on the front. Getting the tires back on the car. No adjustments according to Matt Chambers, the crew chief. And Kurt Busch will take on a full load of fuel. Amy East? Well, Mike Wallace has come in for right side tires and fuel. And that is exactly what they wanted to do here. They were happy when they saw the yellow come out because they were going to stop anyway. They now are getting ready to get that second set of fuel in. But it looks like Andy Houston is going to win the race off a of pit lane biffle. And then Setzer and then Mike Wallace. So a little bit slower stop than you're used to seeing the ultra bad boys. And guys, uh, everybody that is in that lead pack, as you see Ron Barfield coasting around the track, all of them went to right side tires and fuel. Ray, you're exactly right. Once again, that's why you're the crew chief. Well, Benny, it uh, seems a little bit easier up here than it used to down on the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you don't have any of us sticking our microphones in there saying, hey, Ray, what are you going to do? That might have been Barfield that blew up a moment ago. It, just, it was a white car going down in one. I thought it was Rich Woodland, but it could have been Barfield I saw smoking and the reason for the caution flag. Uh, Woodland is still shown in 11th spot, one lap down, so it probably was Barfield. Yeah, probably Both was. of them are white trucks, so tough break for Ron Barfield and his own team now after running last year for Tom Gloy. There is Kurt Busch. Dave, uh, what's the latest on this uh, young rookie who's looking good? Marty, he had about a 15-second longer pit stop than he wanted to. That's because a NASCAR official was standing right in front of his truck, wouldn't let him go anywhere. The guys, in their eagerness to put on those two right side sticker tires, came off the wall too soon. Oops. Oops. I tell you one thing, I have really been impressed with the job that Kurt Busch has done. This is a 21-year-old kid from the Southwest Series. I know he has raced at Phoenix, and I guess he might have raced at California but he's never seen a racetrack like this before, and I am really impressed with the job he's done today. Me too, Benny. Pick your first race to race at Daytona Speedway. That's a pretty tough deal. Next week, we uh, continue our Florida excursion at the Dodge Dealers 400 from Homestead. It's 3.30 Eastern, Saturday, February 26th on the ESPN2, and Ray Evernham's going to be the Grand Marshal, and, boy, we're going to watch him wave the flag and do all those official things. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. I'll tell you, Ray, don't drop that flag because I will be unmerciful if you do. <laughs> For those of you who have just tuned in and saying, wait a minute, why is truck racing on ESPN2? We were in a two hour and 24 minute red flag period for this incident involving 10 trucks. And watch the black one on the top of your screen, Jeffrey Bodine. Now, I know if you have not seen that before, you are going to be stunned when I tell you he has a fractured cheekbone, fractured right wrist, right elbow, big toe, and some possible fractured ankle. There's another view. That's living name of the green car goes down, and Rob Morgan, the 46, makes contact with Kurt Busch, and there, Jeffrey Dunk comes along. Hits Rob Morgan and in that outside retaining wall. And it, it literally, in auto racing, they use the term, he tore the fence down, which means he hit awfully hard. Well, literally, he did, in fact, tear the fence down. And uh, Jeffrey is alert and conscious, and he is going to make a full recovery. And that is the best news we can pass along there. And this is when he uh, got out. You could see him. He was moving. And uh, that was the best sign that we could see at the time. We could also tell you Jimmy Kitchens was transported for precautionary moves. And then also we had uh, five fans that were uh, transported. The spectators have uh, minor injuries. They're being treated at uh, Halifax. There were also four other spectators treated and released from the infield care center. So that's the best news. After all that carnage, everybody is going to be okay. Now, we're going back to green flag racing here on lap 86. 15. 15 laps to go to determine the first winner of the inaugural NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series at Daytona International Speedway. And look at Mike Wallace. Here he comes. Got to run. Can he get in between or even get around Andy Houston? Now he picks up Biffle as a drafting partner, and the Chevrolet is hung out. Yes. Greg Bibble said, uh, Ford or Chevrolet? Let me see. What much of a decision. He dies on the back bumper of Mike Wallace. 
We're on board with Wallace. This is at 187 miles an hour. Fifteen laps to go, eight trucks on the lead lap. We got 28 lead changes. By far and away, the most ever in the NASCAR Crash for Truck Series. You're on board with Dennis Setzer. Now with Mike Wallace. We had to breathe it. Andy Houston has another Chevrolet. And Terry Cook right behind him, and both those Chevrolets team up and drive by Mike Wallace. Terry Cook qualified on a provisional with 30 seconds. He had a gearbox problem just as he was getting ready to take the green flag. He's finding himself with a chance to win here at Daytona. I believe Dennis Setzer in that dodge is going to do what he can to keep Andy Houston. Oh, was... some contact between Terry Cook and Pitbull and almost turned Cook around. Cook gave him a little wave, but when everything's okay. They're back at it. Cook's all right. Pitbull's okay. And for the lead, Mike Wallace goes in. Oh, I start to see went front, but no. Houston drafts on the back of that dodge, and here comes Terry Cook once again. I think Cook wants to try and hook up with Houston if he can, BP. That'd be two Chevrolets. Right now, he's going to stay on the back bumper of uh, Mike Wallace. Two abreast down the back stretch. Dennis Setzer is a lap down. He is trying to get back in position to become the ninth truck on the lead lap. So far, there are eight. Oh, man. Dennis Setzer, we saw him working on the right front of his truck. It's like he's got a bad shock or something. He had a bump down in three or four that time, and the truck was all over the place. On board, you can see that right side of the number one Mopar Dodge coming by the strike. It's going to be Mike Wallace still in the lead with 12 laps to go at the Daytona 250. Terry Cook has found himself in second place. Greg Biffle is third. Andy Houston is fourth. You're on board again with Mike Wallace. Here comes Andy Houston once again trying to follow Dennis Setzer. Setzer, a lap down. We go back on board. Andy Houston loses some contact. Here comes Biffle. Dave, uh, got an update on the uh, 88. Terry Cook had an extend extended stop, Marty. They didn't change any tires. They did that after the long red flag period. They worked a little bit more on their aero push on the left front. And how about a call to Kenny Martin in the 98? All smiles in their pits. Crew Chief Oliver Allen said they had no adjustments. They've just kept a tight truck under him all day. And told him just relax, if that's even possible here at Daytona. His first NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race, and right now he's shown in fourth position. Kenny Martin is. And doing a great job, and so are these two. Mike Wallace has far and away led the most laps, 48 of the 89 that we have run. There have been 12 different leaders, 31 lead changes. I have a feeling there may be another one before this race is over. 